Imagine spiders crawling out of your shoes, flames shooting out of the drawers as soon as you open it, an undertaker hunting you preparing your early funeral, your co-workers wearing suits made of worms, and on top of that, a bunch of evil scientists trying to frame you for a crime you didn't commit. Sounds like a regrettable acid trip? Well, it was a trip. Peter trip. But the visions were not caused by any drugs, just sleep deprivation. And we all know that missing a good night's sleep can be devastating. New studies being published all the time are showing us how deep this devastation can go. Sleep is a very complex process, so each of those phases seems to be responsible for different things and can break us in different ways. Researchers digging deeper into that made some interesting findings on not just total sleep deprivation, but the deprivation of dreams. So today I wanted to talk a bit about what happens when we artificially cut the time of our nightly at wild adventures and how studies around that topic can show us how brain prioritize the content of our dreams. Peter Tripp, with his 201 hour long marathon, gave us a unique insight on what happens with human perception under the state of extreme sleep deprivation. Eight days without even a nap not only completely changed his behavior, but destroyed his cognitive abilities. After four days of being awake, he barely had any mental capacity to perform more daily tasks. After the fifth day, solving a simple math problem seemed like a torture to his weary mind. This loss of basic cognitive skills frightened Trip himself, boosting anxiety and fueling already disturbing hallucinations. This experiment, or more a stunt, was done in 1959. Peter was a radio DJ, keeping awake and broadcasting as a charity event. After 200 hours, the trial was over and Trip jumped into his pyjamas for a well-deserved nap. He slept for 13 hours, woke up and asked for a newspaper, as if the cognitive devastating stunt never happened. His mental skills were quickly adjusting to the pre-marathon levels, memory problems were going away. He seemed to have recovered really nicely and while he still suffered from a mild depression for the next three months, looking at the research done on the sleep deprivation, Tripp and all the others trying to beat his record were very, very lucky. Foremost, they didn't die like rats. I mean the 10 rats from a classic 1989 study with the rodents subjected to total sleep deprivation. All rats passed away within 11 to 32 days of their wake marathon. What is more interesting, the cause of death of those poor rats is still not fully understood. But their overall state was, well, not so great. We knew that all the rats were weak, with visible lesions of their tails and paws. There was also a general tendency to lose weight despite improved food intake. This was explained by increased energy expenditure. Somehow a complete lack of sleep triggered a body reaction that required a lot of energy. Researchers are still trying to pinpoint what exactly is killing the sleepless rats, which is a mundane task since there are plenty of possible culprits. So going back to Peter and other insomnia explorers, their fairly complete recovery was really lucky since sleepless nights were breaking havoc in their bodies and brains. So let's explore some examples of the sleepless fallout. It is quite easy to ask participants to not sleep and then perform a bunch of tests on them. So there are plenty of publications on human lack of sleepy type. A review from last year provides an extensive list of the damage that sleep deprivation can cause. For example, verbal memories being significantly decimated and the effect was noticed even with just three hours of deprivation. All memories generally badly affected nonverbal, motor and sensory as well. This memory disturbance made it easier to inject false memories into the deprivated group participants. While we are clearly becoming a forgetful mess, our short-term memory and attention is not getting any better. Accuracy is going down faster than the value of Russian oil. Reaction time, on the other hand, is going up. And it's not only the cognitive processing, it's our emotions as well. A publication from 2022 
is focusing on that, showing that just 24 hours of sleep deprivation increased anxiety, fatigue, confusion and depression, not to mention increased inflammation and impulsivity. The effects of lack of sleep are so severe that in a paper about how sleep patterns relate to exam results of first-year students, researchers suggest delaying the test start time in general in hope for more time spent sleeping. Even big brain energy is not going to help us mitigate that sleepy time deprivation annihilation. According to the study from Sweden, people with higher intelligence are more vulnerable to sleep deprivation. The fluid intelligence was related to superior performance, but only in the optimal good night of sleep condition. When the deprivation started, those with higher fluid intelligence were more impacted by insufficient sleep than those with lower fluid intelligence. And while all this is just terrible, the answer about why it is so terrible is quite complex, just like the sleeping process itself. The sleep cycle consists of multiple stages with different complementary brain waves and different bodily tasks to perform. So researchers started to atomize the process to focus on specific parts or tasks of each part of the cycle. And some of those tasks are still quite mysterious, like dreaming that happens in the most vivid form in the rapid eye movement stage. And apparently there is no better way to understand the reason for dreaming than by removing the REM phase completely and trying to observe what exactly is blowing up. As mentioned, we can produce dreams outside the REM phase, but for some reason our brain prefers this time to show us what our imagination can do. During REM phase, as the name suggests, your eyeballs are going wild, moving rapidly and randomly, your heartbeat speeds up, your breathing becomes irregular. At the same time, probably to protect yourself from acting out your dream, you lose muscle tone. This sleep paralysis is the most probable source of the night hack myth, when people waking up from a bad dream with still being paralyzed are interpreting this state as a supernatural wrongdoing. Sleep paralysis is also used pretty neatly to deprive rats of REM sleep. Neatly for the researchers, not so much for the rodents, I mean. The most popular way to introduce the REM sleep deprivation is the flower pot method. The experimental animal is allowed to stay on a small raised platform over water where during REM sleep due to muscle atonia the animal cannot relax on the platform. To avoid falling, the animal avoids REM sleep, resulting in REM sleep deprivation. So in other words, when the brain switches to REM phase and muscles switch to jelly mode, the animal would fall into the water. Instead, the rat wakes up just before that happens or sadly shortly after. A study from 2021 showed that a particular flower pot setup is not inducing stress in rats. But I'm pretty sure no one asked rats about how cool it is for them to be waterboarded every night. So we know from the previous chapter that sleep deprivation is uh, in general making the rats hungry, skinny, sick and dead. What happens when we only selectively remove the REM part of the night cycle? Well, a study published in Behavioral Brain Research showed that the rats with REM deprivation were still losing weight, but they lost interest in getting a sucrose palate reward, a delicacy for any hungry rat. The REMless rats were showing evidence of understanding the rules of getting the reward, so it was not about memory or other cognitive deficits, they were just not into it. Researchers sum it up with REM sleep deprivation appears to alter systems involved in motivational processes, reward and or attention. And this reward system alteration is very interesting. Another study showed, for example, that rats deprived of REM sleep are significantly more eager to drink ethanol. Most probably drinking to forget the flower pot. But still, it seems like lack of REM phase, so also vivid dreams, can push your rat into alcoholism. But what about humans? Let's start with a fact that our brain doesn't like to lose its sweet, sweet REM phase. A healthy adult should get around 90 minutes of REM sleep every night. In a study published in 2005, 
Dr. Ningsen showed that losing about 30 minutes of rapid sleep during one night can lead to a 35% REM time increase the next night, a proper REM rebound. Not only that, the group that had their REM time limited to only 25 minutes rated their dreams as significantly more interesting, as if the brain wanted to squeeze the most vivid weirdness out of the limited REM time. Our brain is also not waiting for the rebound to the next night. The brain will try to hook into the REM phase as soon as it is possible. As Nielsen mentioned in the Scientific American article, as soon as you start to rob them of REM, the pressure for them to go back into REM starts to build. So sometimes he had to wake a participant 40 times in one night because they went directly into the REM as soon as they started napping. Okay, but what could be the reason for this need for dream? Total sleep deprivation affected everything, but mainly memory. Maybe our brain needs this REM phase and dreams to consolidate those recent experiences. Maybe the content of our dreams can shed some light on this. Professor Mark Blagro, in a series of studies, tried to pinpoint the relation between our daily experiences and night adventures and dig deeper into an amazing effect of dream lag. Dream lag is an observation that within dreams we are frequently incorporating most recent memories, so we are basically dumping all of the day residue. But then we hardly ever incorporate any memories from two to four days before the dream. Instead, we incorporate more memories from five to seven days before. So we had a very specific dream lag of five to seven days. In different experiments, Blackgrove asked participants to write daily journals, record all the activities, along with the emotional value of those. He also asked them to record their dreams for each night. After comparing the content of the journals, there was visible day residue dump on the same night and dream lag content happening around five to seven days after the experience happened. One of the suggested explanation is that the hippocampus goes over the events from the previous day and selects some to be integrated into the long-term memory. Those memories to be are then transferred over to the neocortex for more permanent storage. This transfer takes about a week. So within our dreams, we could be witnessing the consolidation of very specific memories with the sprinkle of our imagination going wild. But how brain decides which experiences to store? There is a lot of experiences to choose from, and brain is trying its best. The more activities were mentioned in the participant's journal, the more intense dreams were experienced that night. But what is more important, the more intense the real experience was, the higher the chance of dreaming about it. As the publication states, this may indicate a memory processing function of sleep, which the dream content may reflect. But with more publications on the horizon, we could be revealing more rules for memory prioritization. So most probably also prioritization of dream content. In the introduction section of a publication from 2012, we can read that emotional brain systems are selectively activated during the REM phase of sleep. This could suggest that REM sleep may be particularly related to emotion, encoding them, processing, incorporating. To dig deeper into that, researchers checked behaviorally and with fMRI how REM deprivation affects emotional processing. Participants were shown a series of images, some directly threatening the observer, some threatening a third party, and some neutral. Participants were instructed to imagine themselves as a part of the scene and decide, as soon as possible, how to react, to defend themselves or avoid any action. It turned out that REM-deprived people significantly more often choose to actively defend themselves when compared versus the baseline before the deprivation or versus a group that uh, sleep was interrupted in the non-REM phases. On top of that, on the deprivation group, the activation of the brain regions related to emotional processing was on the same or even elevated level as before the deprivation. As the authors note, the lack of REM sleep in humans is associated with enhanced emotional reactivity, and that results 
highlight the specific role of REM sleep in regulating the neural substrate for emotional responsiveness. Seems like REM sleep could be helping us to regulate the emotional response when we are awake. And from the rats experiment, it looks like the motivation as well. It fits the results of the classic REM deprivation experiment from 1950. REM deprived participants become anxious, moody, irritated and hungry. Several of them were so annoyed that they lost interest in continuing the experiment, they left the study early. This could explain the content of our dreams as well. Maybe it's not about the setting or context of the experience, perhaps it's all about the emotional aspect of it. Then our brain is prioritizing some memories over others based on their emotional value. Those brain-picked memories are being then processed and consolidated in the REM phase and can sneak into our dreams in a more abstract form. Participants from the daily diary study of Professor Blackgrove indeed reported more dreams for more emotional experiences. This could also explain Peter Tripp's hallucination about a scientist trying to frame him into something. Soon after his wakeaton was finished, he was found guilty on a charge of commercial bribery. That's for sure a memory that his REM brain would like to consolidate. In any way, I hope you will find enough time to sleep well tonight and have vivid positive dreams to record in your dream journal. See you in the next one. Before you go, since the dream content topic is super interesting to me, I have two quick questions for you. What is the weirdest dream you ever had? And can you connect it somehow to a memory you have? Let me know in the comments below. I'm super curious to hear your stories.